what is up welcome back to my channel today we are working on day six in december daily and actually my day six story happened on day five um i am not so married to the idea that what you're documenting has to happen on the day that you're documenting it um oh this is not the right page protector okay i'm gonna have to go look for another page protector i thought i grabbed the one that has two three by fours on the top and one four by six on the bottom so I had it like this and I had it upside down I'm gonna go look for another page protector and then get started again okay I'm back I found the right page protector and then I left the wrong one on my desk so I'm gonna move that one so I don't get confused um, but I'm not so married to the idea that the story you tell has to happen on the day you tell it and I really wanted to tell this story so yesterday was Sunday um, so the fifth fell on a Sunday, and Josh and I, our Sundays are kind of sacred at this point. So um, for a while, Josh and I had very different work schedules, and I was in school and all this other stuff. And now he has a position where um, he works the exact same hours that I do. So we both work Monday to Friday. Well, he goes to work much earlier than I do, but we're both home by like 5 o'clock most days, and then he doesn't work weekends anymore. And this is like a new thing for our family where we're home like all the time together, <laughs> which seems kind of interesting. But we're home all the time together because by the time I get home from work, he's already home, and then we're both home on weekends. Um, and it took a little bit of fussing like with our really like trying to figure out just because we were both so used to having so much more alone time than we have now um and that's an adjustment right like joshua is absolutely the love of my life but that doesn't mean that i am missing like i'm not missing my alone time and then we're in a, you know we're in a relatively small apartment so we're like literally on top of each other all the time when we're here so we've decided that for saturdays we would give each other room to just kind of ignore each other like to treat Saturdays the way we used to when no when we were home alone and then for Sundays Sundays would be our day where we like reconnect and we spend like at least Sunday afternoon together so like yesterday I got up and I scrapbooked and he got up and he played video games and then by the time Sunday afternoon hit it was like all right Sunday afternoon is us time what are we going to do with it and we don't always have to do something right but yesterday we were sitting at home and we were just looking at each other and I was like do you want to go get brunch and mind you, it wasn't brunch time. It was like three o'clock. Um, and he was like, sure. Because where we are, there's like a bunch of cafes within walking distance. So we don't even have to like make it a thing. We can just get up and be like, hey, do you want to go get food? Um, so it was like 3.30 and we ended up going and get French toast and coffee at like 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, and I love that we can do that now um, in the season of the life that we're in. Because one... Um, you can actually go out to eat and like eat indoors because outdoor dining during November in New York City, well, December, outdoor dining in December, New York City is not my idea of a good time. Um, but two, we have the opportunity to do that because we're both here and we're present, right? So I had him take this picture of me sitting with my coffee uh, with the intention of cutting this out and putting a six in the pocket. And then I printed a few photos. So I have this photo that I took of our French toast plates after we were done. It's funny because we got the same exact thing, but because it's like a smaller cafe, like they served it to us on two different plates, I guess they didn't have the same plate. And it was, it was really interesting because his came out, mine came out in triangles and his came out in squares. And I think it's because his plate was smaller, but it was the same exact dish. Um, and then I was watching Amy Gretchen do a video on using the foil quill um, and because I really wanted to foil a sentiment directly on this photo, I will link the video of that I watched in the description box if you want to see how I did this. But I used the foil quill with my silhouette to foil directly on this photo, and that's because Amy Gretchen is the foil quill queen um, and has all the deets. And I took this picture of us after we got. So this is one of the pictures I included in my week in the life was a picture of us in bed, and I wanted to recreate it because that's what we were doing. We went to eat, and then we came back. I was spinning. That's a little e-spinner. So I have a full-size wheel and then an e-spinner. And Joshua was reading on his tablet. And I was like, this is like classic Sunday afternoon. And every now and then I would reach over and we would talk to each other. Um, but we were just present for a little bit. And then we got up and made dinner and then, you know, got ready for the work week. So that's what I have so far. Um, I did do my journaling directly on a journaling card. Um, I printed, this is the physical card. So I printed it directly on the physical card. And that's what I have. I have made some embellishment choices already. Um... So I know for sure I want to do this on the middle of the photo. I'm still trying to decide if I want to ink blend it or not. I haven't stuck this down. This is from Co Carrie Bradford and Colorcast Designs did um, an embellishment collaboration last year, and that's what this is from. 
And then I also have the little house. And because I'm putting wood veneer on one side, I want to put wood veneer on the other side. So I have this little house that I'm going to pop right on top of my foiled sentiment. So that's going to go like that. Um, just so, like, I want it kind of to not distract from the picture, but I also want to repeat the wood veneer so it's, it's on the other side. So that's that. And then as far as this card goes, I'm going to do some stamping. And I probably should have had a card ready to stamp on. All right, so as far as stamps go, I have um, the star stamp from this year. It was the only stamp I bought this year. I have, again, I have a thing of for stars. So this is the star stamp from this year. And then I have this from last year. This is from Paper Person, and it's called Highline Holidays. And I'm going to stamp a background and then stamp Love and Joy on top of it, and that's going to be my filler card. So I pulled out some inks that are not super vibrant because I want to be able to stamp on top of it and I don't want it to be too distracting. Um, and I figured I would stamp some of these um, larger stars and then stamp some of the outlines. And my cats are currently losing their mind. So I'm going to go see what they're doing and see if I can stop them from doing it. So I have some inks from Catherine Pooler uh, loaded on my desk. Uh, the green is called Green Tea. Um, it's one of the colors I use in my December album, like, I've had it for, like, I think two years, and I think I use it every year. I think it's, like, the perfect dusty olive shade, um, and so I use it quite often. And then I have a yellow called Shea Butter, um, and I'm just going with, with lighter colors, just, again, so I can stamp on top of it. So, I'm going to just kind of build up a star background and see where we go from here. Okay, so I'm really happy with the placement of the solid stamps. Um, I just laid out three stamps at a time, and that is the joy of having something like a Misty tool, is I can do that. Like, I can lay out multiple stamps at the same time, um, and then stamp them all at once. Um, and it's just, it's an ease factor. There's, you could absolutely hand stamp this. Also, the other advantage to the Misty is if I don't get... The, that's the real advantage is if I don't get a good impression the first time, I can stamp it more than once. So I'm happy with the way these filled stamps look in. So I'm just going to take a gray ink now, and I have Catherine Pooler Twilight. I figured since I'm going to use my Catherine Pooler inks, I'll just pull out all my Catherine Pooler inks. I have Catherine Pooler Twilight, um, and I'm going to stamp some of the larger star outlines just over top where I already did the stamping, but kind of coming closer to the center of the page. So I'm gonna kinda just figure these out. No real rhyme or reason, um, just just laying these down. I think I like that like that. And then I'm just gonna hit these all with the, oh, I didn't realize that was still there. That's That would be useful to take off because then that would stamp. Um, so I'm gonna hit these all with gray ink. And we're going to see what this looks like. But I like building patterns. That's part of the reason why I went for this stamp set this year versus like the other stamp sets. I just really like pattern building. And I knew that this would be a good stamp for building patterns. All right, let's see what this looks like. We're going to cross our fingers that all of our work did not go. Oh, that's perfect. So do you see the way the gray is really faint, but it just provides that star outline? I could have done this in black, but because I plan on stamping over it, gray just made the most sense so that it's not super distracting. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I left the center empty, and that's because I'm going to stamp a sentiment right in the middle of the card. Okay, I love that. I think that looks so good. All right, so here's what my card looks like so far. The gray is a little faint, so I'm going to lift it up so you can see it. But that's what my card looks like so far. All right, so we're about to finish up my card. I have the sentiment love and joy from that paper person Highline Christmas set. If it is available, I will link it. But like I said, I got it last year. And I don't know if Kelly re-releases stamps. Um, she might. So I'm going to check after I'm done filming if it's available. But if it's not, I'm sure you can find something similar. Or you could do this with like one letter at a time if you decided you wanted to create something similar. I just really like the font and like the length of these. I have a real, I don't know, I'm really attracted to like tall skinny alphabets in this season. I don't know. There we go. That looks really good. And I stamped it with my pigment black ink like I normally do for any sort of text. Now, when I cut my card, I cut it to three and a half by four and a half because I wanted 
some of the stamping to hang off the edge and I wanted to be able to trim the card down um, to fit how I wanted it to fit. So after I pull this off the Misty, I'm going to take it to my paper trimmer and figure out how I wanna trim this down so that it's a three by four card. Okay, so I'm back. I have my card all finished. I'm going to stick down one of these um, gold glitter stars. I did get a new bottle of wet glue, you guys, so I will be much more functional when Amazon gives me my supplies. Um, that has no tape on it, but I did get another bottle of wet glue because I am struggling with this one. This is like super empty and I am past due for a new one. So I ordered one with, uh, actually I ordered it with some foil for my mink because I'm out of gold foil too. And these are all the supplies that I didn't realize I was out of until I started working on this project. Like who runs out of wet glue? I have no idea. Um, but I'll be up and running in like a day. Okay, so I have some of these gold uh, glitter chipboard stars. Um, I kind of appreciate that these are flatter than normal chipboard and that they're not adhesive because then I could figure out where I wanna put them. So there we go, I've trimmed down my card. It fits in there perfectly. And I love how the stars match these stars um, and how good that stamping looks. I'm really happy with that. And then on this side, I think what I'm going to do is staple this number in here because I feel like if I don't, it's going to keep wandering. And I'm going to staple this star to the outside of the page protector. I like, you know, having things on the inside and the outside and I can do that. So just gotta get this right where I want it. And I'm gonna staple it right to the outside of the page protector. That way I don't have to worry about my six like falling out as the album flips because that you know could totally happen if it's not adhered into this at all it would just disappear so there we go i have my six i have my photo this is the thing about page protectors is that glare gets me every single time i have my six i have my photo and then i have my journaling on the back all right so now i'm just going to work on my large photos and then we're just about done for the day so i have this shaker tag and I honestly don't remember where it was from. I was gonna say it's probably from the Star Mini Kit, but I'm not sure if it was in the Star Mini Kit or if it was in the main kit. That is empty, so I probably should go grab another one of those. And we're gonna skew this a little bit to the right because I'm gonna put this merry and bright. And if you've never bought chipboard, not chipboard, this is not chipboard. If you've never bought wood veneer from Colorcast Designs, Jessica's wood veneer is self-adhesive. You just gotta get the adhesive backing off, which is sometimes too much for me, and that's why we use tweezers. And I'm going to use my T-square to make this sure that this goes down straight the first time because there is no picking this back up once it goes down. Trust me, I've tried. Once it goes down, it is staying put, um, so it's in our best interest to get it right the first time. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on the back of this and add a star. Where do I want to add the star? Kind of like that. All right, I like that. And I'm adding the star to repeat elements. I talk about repeating elements all the time, but it is really the fastest way to tie a spread together is to just do the same thing on all the pages, even if your photos are very different. If you do the same thing on all the pages, it really helps things to look put together. And then I'm going to add this towel. So now I'm not going to add a star over here because I already have all that gold foil and that is my sparkle on this page. So I'm not gonna add a star. But I am gonna add a little wood veneer house right on top of the word magic. And again, you can get, I will link the, the video that I use from Amy to um, foil this directly on the photo. But now that I know how to do it, I'm gonna be foiling everything. It's gonna be unstoppable. Everything in my album is gonna be shiny. All right, that is day six. Um, do I wanna put something here? I'm still waffling about putting something here. I wanted to put another piece of wood veneer so that there was wood veneer on all the elements of this spread, but I couldn't find a piece of wood veneer that I liked to put here. So I'm gonna go rifling through my stash. So if you see the finished photos and this looks a little different, it's cause I found an embellishment that I liked that I put there. So that's pretty much how the pages work. It's gonna be like this. This is gonna flip like this with the story. Here's the big photo with, um, with the journaling. I definitely put that down straight, didn't I? 
Okay. I'm, I get a little paranoid. Um, here is the story with the filler card and the big photo. And then here is the second big photo on the back. And again, loving the opportunity that 10 by 8 gives me to include large photo enlargements in my album. It's, it's probably my favorite thing. All right, so that's it. I'll read you my journaling. It says, to easy Sunday afternoons, you are my favorite ritual. With Joshua obtaining the position and the schedule he wanted, we've had to shift in our little family from sometimes being two ships who passed each other during the day and rolled to each other at night to being together at home at much higher frequencies. And the shifting and adjusting this change is required has been hard won. But then there's you, our new patch of sacred time before the week starts, our time where we commit to just being, to rest, and to communication, to minimizing distractions and space between us. There's room for spontaneity. I love that one of us can just decide to go have French toast in the middle of the day at our local cafe and the other is immediately dressed and ready to go, and room to relax and spin and read with the occasional check-in. I love all the shapes, that's a typo, I love all the shapes and forms you take for us, how dedicated we are to carving out this time for each other and with each other, and the hope you provide of a moment to press pause after long and driving weeks. For however long we have you, we have these airy moments of light, I'm grateful for this experience. And again, just some journaling about what the season of our life looks now and how Sundays are a lot easier now than they were before. And then I have my photos, and I'm really happy with how this page came out. Um... I love telling everyday stories in December Daily, um, and yeah. Also, that cut photo worked out in my head perfectly. One of these days, I'll show you my iPad where I sketch out my pages the night before. I use the GoodNotes app, and I sketch out my pages, and they're all terrible disasters, but somehow they translate to real pages in the album, so I guess we're doing something right. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the page. Let me know how you're documenting regular December days in your album if you are working on December Daily. And until um, next time, keep it crafting. Have the very best day, and I'll see you around. Bye for now.